Hey, I'm Andrew Hales. I'm here with Dr. Ramani Dervasala, yes. author of Should I Stay or Should I Go? Surviving a Relationship with a Narcissist. She is a professor at Cal State Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, how, how long have you been there? Almost 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, thank you so much for being thank here. You. It's thank very you. Thank nice you for having me. Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And you also have a practice. I have a private practice. I have a location in Santa Monica, California, and one in Sherman Oaks, California. Has you, have you ever had one just come to you and admit that, that they are yeah, one? I have. Literally come in, five minutes in, they're like, yep, I'm having marriage problems, I'm married to a narcissist, and I am a narcissist. Wow. I'm like, great, gives me a place to work from. You mentioned in your book that they can't change. Mm -mm. So what, how, do you, what do, how do you go about helping them? You're not going to change the totality of them. What you might be able to do is change how they respond to some situations that they're in. Mm. So for example, narcissists are really prone to getting really angry really quickly. Mm. Okay, And that's actually one of the things that makes them scary and uncomfortable and people sort of tolerate it. But it's, it's scary and you explain to them, you teach them, like, do you understand how this could make someone else feel unsafe? They're not delusional. If you explain mm. something to them, they'll get it. So maybe you might be able to get them to react differently to some situations. You might be able to get them to at least like you say, hey, it helps if you ask someone how they're doing and actually listen to the answer. But what you won't be able mm. to change or really move that much is that core lack of empathy, their entitlement, their grandiosity, all of that. Because they really don't have a lot of self-esteem. They huh. regulate all their self-esteem from the outside. And no one else can really come along to a full-grown adult and hand them over self-esteem that they put inside. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, were they born it or? No, they're made. Narcissists are made, not born. And it's, it's, a, it's typically what happens in their early environment. I always say that narcissists are both over and under indulged. In other words, they get a lot of like, if they're succeeding, if they're getting straight A's or if they're really pretty or cute or they're getting all you know, best on the basketball team mm -hmm. or trophies. Yeah. They make their parents look good. <clears throat> There's lots of praise. In fact, they'll feel like the center of attention. Mm. But as soon as that child has any form of emotional need, parents are nowhere to be found. That's what I mean by over and under indulge. Mm. They're often, they can be spoiled. Mm -hmm. They get lots of gifts, lots of opportunities, big vacations, Disneyland front of the line passes. Mm -hmm. But when mom mm. and dad, they actually need someone to listen, there ain't adult to be found. Yeah, when I was reading your book and you're listing off the characteristics, I, I was thinking about myself, mm -hmm. like I'm a narcissist, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, what makes you, do you really feel like you don't like, do you feel like you really lack empathy for other people? <laughs> Sometimes, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, but you, yeah, you, you mentioned they're not all evil. They're not evil. I, let me put it this way. I'll be honest with you. They're not evil. The psychopaths, their their far scarier <laughs> cousins are, are evil, right? Okay. They're um, unpleasant. They're definitely not people you'd want to get into an intimate relationship with. I'm sorry you're admitting that, but honestly, like, not what I'd want to sign on yeah, for. Yeah. That said, um, <laughs> at times they may make very interesting coworkers. They can be incredibly smart, incredibly sharp. Mm. In fact, because they lack empathy, they have almost tunnel vision on achievement. They're like, I don't care if it's your kid's birthday. You're staying late. Mm. You know, it's that kind of thing. An utter lack of it. I don't care if your mother's sick. We've got stuff to do. Mm. So there's definitely, they get the job done. But they're really not wired for em uh, intimacy, empathy, and closeness. They're just not. Should they stay single? In my ideal, <laughs> utopic, <laughs> mentally healthy universe, they actually would. And we'd come up with oh. robot partners for them to have sex with. And oh. wouldn't that be a great alternate universe? So they weren't uh. wrecking other... Or they'd all mate with or each other. Or they just have... Oh, right. Other narcissists, but the, I don't want them to have kids because they'd destroy their kids because then there'd be no one offering the kids empathy. So if we could sort of put them in sort of some sort of island where they don't mm. breed, but they're together, that might actually work. Wow. But yeah, no, I mean, since that, that, no that sort them. of like, you know, that sort of dystopian future <coughs> is not one that I'd ever want. But I don't, I, yeah, no, I don't so think there's hope. So a narcissist um, comes to you for help. Yes. What do you, how do you help them? Usually they come with a set problem. They don't say, make me better they say I'm and well, having usually trouble in my 90, marriage well 99 percent of them don't admit it right they're most don't no right they don't and you know you so almost, it's rare it's you know what it is to call someone a narcissist is almost like calling them a name you know because mm -hmm. it's not it usually doesn't and it's not a word that carries positive connotations i actually when i'm talking with a client would really break it down like you really do lack empathy or you really are deeply entitled or wow you really are grandiose mm -hmm. it's, instead of saying hey here's a cake i'm like well, there's some flour and some sugar and some eggs and that's this stuff's all hanging out together and mm -hmm. it becomes a cake, you know? So I'm trying to avoid calling it a cake, right. you know, and then talking about the specific sub facets of it. And here's the rub. What's really hard is that 
things like relationships they can get out of, but once they become a parent, I mean, they really are on a collision course to destroy that poor kid's life. Because wow. they're not even trying to. It's not like they're like, ha, 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 I want to destroy my yeah, kid's yeah. life. They're just not fit for parenting. They're too selfish. <laughs> so do they have souls? Everybody has a soul. Every, if Charles Manson had a soul. I'm okay. sure it was quite dark and twisted, but every human being has a soul. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we're talking about is what do we as a society value in another person? I'm going to be so stone cold honest with you, Andrew. Narcissism is a recipe for success. You mm -hmm. show me a single CEO or world leader who's not a narcissist, and I'll give you a buck. Hmm. Uh, Bill Gates? Bill Gates probably had enough. He, he actually really squelched and crushed his competitors when Microsoft was coming up. Well, that's just normal business. Is it? Or yeah, is it sure. lack of empathy? We don't know. We, we can call <coughs> his wife. I've got to tell you, well, by all, a, of, all <laughs> reports, I must say that Bill Gates and, and his wife have donated inordinate amount of sums to charity, a lot of which is doing good works. Mm -hmm. He's clearly had kids. We don't, we're not privy to the inside of his world, but I will say that in order for a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs or a George Soros or any of these people to have become what they became, they had to have a fair amount of grandiosity. They did. They ha Steve Jobs had to have that vision that no one else did mm. to make Apple Apple. Now, that grandiosity, it's almost like the, the human spirit is where there's a lot of trade-offs, right? Mm. When there's a lot of grandiosity, other things have to give. You almost have to have that vision has to encompass and consume you. Mm -hmm. So in that way, I have friends who are narcissists and they serve a purpose in my life. They're smart. They're scintillating. I sure as hell would never go to them with a problem. Hmm. And I wouldn't go to them at times when my life is vulnerable. So when my, I'm going through a rough patch, I'm not going to call them. I ain't going to return their calls. I can't be bothered. You don't hang out with them? Um, short periods of time. It's good. Always, when you have a party, you want a few narcissists there, keep the conversation going. <laughs> They're definitely good to have in your back pocket for parties and other events. It sounds like you're just... You're, you're kind of um, labeling just self-confident people. No, 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 no. Because self-confident people can be self-confident and still have empathy. Hmm. And not be entitled. And not be superficial. And not constantly be seeking admiration. <laughs> uh, a lot of these YouTube stars, are you, you consider them narcissists? <laughs> are you trying to get a free therapy session out of me, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <laughs> um, you know what? Yes, I think some of them are. because Especially they, vlogging. Um, vlog, vlogging, it's so funny you say that. I was recently <laughs> exposed to this concept of vlogging through my students because I'm a university professor. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at what they showed me and I really, my face was perplexed and I, I went sort of offline to some students and privately I said, what just, what did I just witness? And they're like, oh doc, that's just vlogging. I'm like, this is completely self-referential, crazy <laughs> validation seeking stuff. And they're like, yeah, I never heard it put that way, but they're like, yep. <laughs> and it was literally this, this person was documenting moment by moment of their lives yeah. as though anybody would care. <laughs> anybody, okay, like okay, who yeah. cares that you couldn't find a parking spot? Who cares that you bought this kind of orange juice? I was like, right. so how is that person ever going to function in the adult world where there's actually real responsibilities and nobody wants a play by play of your life? It's, yeah, it took me a long time to figure out vlogging before I started doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a lot of people they, they, it's not about entertainment necessarily. Right, right. So they, a lot of my audience, they watch and they feel like, they feel like they're hanging out with me. Okay, like, so and, you, I mean, and they know they're, that we're not friends, but it right. feels, and, but they like the feeling of maybe hanging out with me and it's very laid back and it's right. more about uh, connecting with this person and it's kind of like a connection. But also, then it's and like, like Splenda, reading, it's not really sugar, right? It's like fake, because you're not, you're not right. you don't respond to them. See, that's what I'm talking about. The, Sometimes I do to their comments. To their comments. So, so that's another thing that makes right. YouTube different from Netflix right. and entertainment. Right, but so. I guess where it comes to is, and that it raises an interesting sort of, um, we're at an interesting sort of historical juncture where narcissism is concerned. A lot of what a narcissist is not able to do is engage in what we call a mutual reciprocal relationship where there's give and take. Mm -hmm. I ask you how your day is and I actually care. Mm -hmm. And then the next step in that dance is you ask me about my day. You really care how my day is going? I actually do. It's, early, it's in the morning <laughs> and I actually, and I was late, which I felt terrible about. That's all so right. what have you been doing since you woke up? Um, getting ready and I got coffee, I took Bonnie for a walk. Mm -hmm. Um, just prepping, just looking at my notes. What, what time did you get up? About eight o'clock. Is that your like usual wake up time? 
No, I'm usually a night owl. I'll sleep in. Uh, but this thing was in the morning. Okay, yeah. so you got up early. You got your thing. Everything's really neat and clean, yeah. so I must say. Um, you know, and any like, did you have any, I don't know, like I always say, like, did any bombs go off this morning? Like, or was it just sort of a normal sleep? A normal morning? day, yeah. Good. All right. <clears throat> yeah. I'm actually curious about that because I'm curious about you. Mm-hmm. And then again. And why, then, were you, why were you late? I was late because <laughs> my, um, because my, uh, no, Partner's it's, it's LA me. traffic, right? It's LA traffic, yeah. and then I had to get him somewhere, but I wanted to see him off because he's leaving for a few days, okay. and so I wanted to have a moment. I thought, oh, easy, I'll get you off by 8.45, I'll get to Hollywood by 9, and I was just this holy wall of traffic. <laughs> and, I thought, How? and then I realized another road was closed, and then there were yeah. nothing, and, I, and this is not a part of town. I drive in in the morning, so I didn't know the rhythms as well, mm. and so that's why that happened, and I that's, felt terrible. That's totally fine. Like, you're doing me a favor. Well, I appreciate so. that, but you see, that dance of conversation mm-hmm. is what my concern is that, for example, if someone's a vlogger or someones it's a one-sided conversation. So in other words, then, you're really sort of peering into someone else's life mm-hmm. versus engaging them right. and both of you getting needs met. What mm-hmm. ha- Then you don't get practiced in that because that's yeah. a skill to have the give and take of a human relationship. So you um, think people that watch vlogs, it's it's unhealthy? Um, I think if they overwatch, if, if it becomes a substitute for real human relationships, yes. Of course. If it's a compliment, no. I mean, I think then it may be a form of entertainment in a way. It may be a, a again, this is where I as a psychologist have to suspend disbelief and say, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. this is going to become a new form of interaction that people have in addition to real human interaction. Yeah. I just don't think that the way the species has been doing things for tens if not hundreds of thousands of years is going to change in 10 years with the advent of YouTube and iPhones. Mm. I just don't think that's how evolution works. I mm. think it's going to take time. And so when somebody uses vlogging or, or observing vlogging as a substitute for human contact, and then we, there's research that just came out that showed that actually young adults, what we often term millennials and maybe even a little younger, are reporting the highest rates of loneliness, loneliness that that group has ever reported. Typically, mm-hmm. it was much older adults that mm-hmm. reported that. Now, completely contrary to expectations, it's young adults that are reporting loneliness despite all this blogging and social media because I don't think it's an adequate substitute. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, the, I mean, everyone's on their phones. Right, everyone's on their phones, yeah. And it's, uh, you're getting this, you know, this mm-hmm. dopamine hit, every right. whatever, and they're just right. addicted, yeah. So then my concern becomes then, for as people get older, when it comes down to the brass tacks and the heavy lifting, for example, of caregiving, parenting, taking care of older adults, like older parents who get sick, that requires, I mean, parenting is nothing but an hourly sacrifice, if not a minute by minute sacrifice, for 20 years at a time mm-hmm. for each child, right? Mm-hmm. If a person's so used to the quick dopamine hit of watching a vlog and then going and doing what they want, they're going to want, they're going to be really frustrated as parents, where it's all give and no take. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that concerns so me I'm for gonna, a whole new generation. I'm going to be a shitty parent. Unless you clean up your act. <laughs> uh, let's see. Narcissists, uh, can you spot narcissists without personally knowing them? I can, but like I'm almost like a big game hunter who can like hear something in the bushes a mile away. No, normally, no, because um, do you think but, I am? Um, I'm getting to know you. Like, I think that you're very. I, I was trying to determine when I came in, <laughs> you're like, you're were, you arrogant, yeah. <laughs> were you shy? Were you shy? Because you also felt a little distant, you know, mm. and like um, tentative, if you will. Like, you're not super warm and extroverted when you first meet you Definitely, by yeah. any stretch. And so, <laughs> yeah, you know, know. <laughs> you're not that guy. Well, I, well, my thing is the king awkward, you know, before I did right. these pranks, yeah. Right, and yet when you smile and you laugh, you, you warm up so quickly, like you turn into someone entirely different, really sweet and oh. lovely. And so I can see there's a, it's a, a definite change. <laughs> that's my charm, change. yeah. But there's a, there's a defense to you, and that's very, that, I mean, in a narcissist, that's not uncommon. It's also not uncommon in someone who's depressed or who's socially anxious. like. There's a whole range of things. So what you might do is go doing a little trolling with them mm. and seeing can they muster up empathy? Mm. Can are they entitled? Do you, let let's put it this way. When I told you that I was running late and this morning, Andrew, you could have said, you know what? I'm a very busy YouTube guy. I you said nine. You didn't come at nine. I value my time. Yeah. You know what? Let's not do this at all, or let's just do it at a day that is better for me. And in fact, mm-hmm. I had even missed it on Wednesday because I'd had a patient emergency. Mm-hmm. So. You didn't do that. That was a good sign because had you done that, like really taken sort of a diva Mm -hmm. sort of position with me, you would have been well within your rights. We made an appointment and I didn't honor it. However, Mm -hmm. entitlement would have been your react. If you had that kind of a reaction, I don't think I would have wanted to do business with you. But I am trying to get something out of you. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, you are. I'm, yeah. I'm serving you. So I'm being smart by not doing that. You are being smart by not doing that, <laughs> but a narcissist may not even be able to hold back on that. Does that make sense? Like they're so, com so they're convinced they're are they? They're kind of impulsive. Impulsive, but also so convinced are they of how important they are that hmm. even though you're saying, oh, I'm getting something from her, so I better not react like that, your entitlement could still have overridden that. How do I know if someone's being a narcissist mm -hmm. or just... As a confident person, you know, watch how what, really how circumspect they are. That they can say they can be confident. Like I can say to you, I'm a really, really good psychologist. I really am. Like I'm good at what I do. Um, I, you know, but I'm always aware there's tons to learn. I go to lots of extra classes. I do tons of extra reading. You know, mm -hmm. and I know that I don't know everything, and I don't claim to be an like, like for example, I don't know much about certain disorders, mm -hmm. so I would refer those cases out. Mm -hmm. um, and you know and step away because it's like sort of stay in your lane kind of thing so mm. it's that ability to know what you know but also know what you don't know people who are falsely or narcissistically confident mm -hmm. they'll sort of claim to be this overarching expert like i'm the best a hundred percent of my sales close like i'm the very best don't go to anyone else they can't do anything for you mm -hmm. i'm not going to say that there's dozens of great shrinks in this town you know and if, if i don't work for you find another one of them i just want you to end up in the, the best place is what i tell someone so they're never born. They're only made. They're made. I feel like if they're made, then they can be unmade, unlearned. Unfortunately, some of that early emotional learning that happens is really hard to undo. Here's the rub, Andrew. There's no incentive for them to change. If a narcissist said to me, I don't like being this guy. I want to be empathic. I don't want to be entitled. Right. I want to stop being grandiose and I want to be a man of depth. Mm. I can work with that because there's a motivation to change. It's like an addict saying, I don't want to stop using. What mm. am I? I can't do anything. So it's, like, it's like being addicted to power or something? Addicted to power, addicted to validation. Hmm. Addicted to validation, yeah. You think uh, all the social media is enhancing yeah. all the narcissists? I do, I do. Because it's, it's a tool to mainline validation. You don't even have to go through the headaches of getting to know someone. You can just have people like your stuff with no other interaction. There's a spectrum though, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Everyone's of course. a little narcissist. I would say, I don't even like the word healthy narcissism because narcissism in and of itself really speaks to not caring about another person. Mm. I think there's a healthy need for validation. Everybody likes to be told you're pretty, you're nice, you did it. What a nice YouTube world you've created here, Andrew, because it is actually really cool. It's amazing, yeah, actually. It's fine. Um, you, uh, your video, I really enjoyed seeing your videos. Like, people want to hear, I, I love, if I write something, people say, Romney, that's great. But when it, when it comes down to brass tacks, I have to feel like I wrote something good. From there on in, everything has to be the icing on the cupcake. Hmm. You know, but you got to be the cupcake. Hmm. You know, you cannot count on other people to build that whole thing up. Narcissism is the idea that your self-esteem can mm -hmm. only ex be good, if you will. You can only really almost exist if other people validate you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely get depressed when I don't upload, you know. That's, that's but, the But thing. that's also... But that's like your I job. Make, yeah, it's my job. So, right. so how do I... That's different. So if your job is to upload and do that, that's what okay. you do. That's how you support yourself. Mm -hmm. That's almost like me saying... Well, see, I actually don't get depressed if I'm not teaching. If I get a break from teaching, I'm thrilled, if that makes sense. Okay. If, but however, I do get depressed when I'm kept from doing my writing, which I love doing. But that's generative. Like, I like creating the writing, mm -hmm. whether or not it gets out into the public. So if, it, if you are contributing to society in a healthy way, and, yeah. uh, and I'm posting a video, I feel yeah. good about my so right. that's not too that's what not if really you narcissistic. Post, you post that video and nobody takes note of it not one person watches it or maybe only five people watch it or like it could you endure that if you felt like it was a really good video no that would suck see and the question is how <laughs> sucky it would be i agree with you like if i if i write a book and sell and try to sell a book and only like 500 or 400 people bought the book i'd be like yeah, so I didn't do something quite right. Yeah. Um, however, I still think the book is good. Can you still say the, so? I might be a little sad, like, wow, I just spent like two years of my life to make a dollar, and I mm. nobody wanted to read what I had to say. Mm. Bummer. But I could step back and say this was one hell of a book. The world either gets it or they don't. Can you say, wow, that video I just po up uploaded that was a great video. Right. The world didn't get it, but it's a good video. A little bit of sadness or a little bit of sort of feeling like a let, let down, that's normal. Mm -hmm. But the idea that your world comes crashing down and it's like, I got to get validation. You see young women do yeah. a lot of this. Like, So when you're seeing the way young women might use Instagram to like put up a lot of attention seeking photos, get past the ones who are really commodifying it. Like they're using it to get like where someone's say, look at them wearing such and such a skirt so they mm -hmm. can get the free clothes or money or whatever they do. 
it's it's validation seeking and you I've, ha I've had clients say like I'm I'm downright depressed if I'm not getting likes and there's a real dejection mm -hmm. that's that's concerning because now you're living your life in the service of the validation so what are the simple differences between narcissism uh, psychopathy and sociopathy mm -hmm. there's, there's there's several differences all psychopaths are narcissistic but not all narcissists are psychopathic does that make sense okay. so it's almost like one nests in the other so if these are psychopaths they're completely they're all completely narcissistic mm -hmm. the fact is though the psychopaths have some other things additional issues the psychopath rarely feels any remorse when they do something bad so they're willing to break rules hurt other people and they feel no guilt a narcissist will actually feel guilty when they hurt someone else what they feel more than guilt though is shame hmm. narcissists do not like being publicly called out for their behavior right. they, it's very uncomfortable for them and they tend to get really rageful and angry when they get called out but it's uncomfortable a psychopath would be like screw you I don't mm -hmm. care if you, you think I did something wrong. It's almost like they'd make great drug kingpins or something mm -hmm. like that. Like they could brutally take people out and they just don't care if it's going to get them what they want. So if they're like, and hey, they're if I kill him and him, then I'm going to get, my business will be fine. They're the ones that usually end up in jail. They end up in jail, but sometimes they also end up as CEOs hmm. because they're able to eviscerate the way you need to to close deals. And sociopaths? Socio here's a back, a back to the born and made. The best way to understand the def difference between a psychopath and a sociopath is psychopaths are born and sociopaths are made. Hmm. And by that I mean the research on psychopaths and psychopathy in general suggests that they may be wired differently. That the part of them called their autonomic nervous system is not as reactive. So whereas a normal person might get anxious, for example, if they heard footsteps coming behind them on a darkened street, or mm. even, you know, or they were about to do something wrong, like transfer money out, embezzle money. Mm -hmm. Normal people, their heart would be racing, they'd be sweating, their pupils would be large, I shouldn't be doing this, I shouldn't be doing this. A psychopath would be click, click, done, and they'd go, still go out and like play with their puppy kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. They just don't care. That is because they're wired like that, nothing gets them anxious, and they're willing and able to do really bad things without feeling uncomfortable. A sociopath is made, and that could be through a, a variety of things. They could be made through their environments. They may have grown up in dangerous and violent environments. They may have had to learn to survive that way. They may have been raised yeah. by parents who were like basically gave them like break the rules all you want if it helps you get ahead. Mm -hmm. It may be that it's somehow they fame. get acculturated fame exactly <laughs> that they may have been a relatively normal person. They get fame too too young. And if I had a dollar for every person who I've worked with who got screwed up by fame early, and they're difficult to turn around because there's this expectation the world owes them something, they don't care who they have to harm to get there, that's mm. sociopathy. They're not born that way. They were actually, and psychopaths, you tend to see these dangerous patterns of behavior before the age of 15. Animal torture, setting fires, bullying peers, beating up peers, stealing truancy. Psychopaths tend to do that young. That's not necessarily the case in sociopaths. Are you, are you religious? Um, I was raised in religion, but I'm not anymore now. <laughs> no. So, yeah, are psychopaths like just like demons? Like they're, they're just, they're, yeah, I think in every culture, they're just naturally time evil. immemorial, psychopaths were the devils, the demons, the, um, the, the evil spirits. They were mm. always built into every society because they've always existed in every society. No hope for them. What do you, what do you tell the narcissist to do then? I say, like, let's work on little things that would make it easier for other people to be with you. Okay. You know, like, for a lot of them, I work on the rage. For some of them, I work on their coldness, because narcissists tend to be... Narcissists are very... There's, there's this woman named Jean Twang. He's, she's, she's a professor at San Diego State. She puts it beautifully. She said, a narcissist is like a piece of chocolate cake. The first few bites are great, and then you start to feel sick. That's what it's like with a narcissist. The first few forkfuls are just magnificent. They're charming and handsome, yeah. and fun. And then after you eat the whole cake, you're like, oh, I don't feel well. Like I don't don't eat the whole cake, huh. you know. So great for a one night stand. Great for a fling. Yeah. Go off to Paris with them for two weeks. You should almost put an expiration date on a relationship with yeah. them. It's like put in, go into your iPhone and say, ah, I'm gonna break up with this person on November 15th. Like much as like you'd have a dentist appointment, and just let it run its term and get the hell out of Dodge. They're always made. Um, and that's can that's and that's sometimes by fame. They can be made by fame, I'm, and yeah, that's. But here's the thing: if a person's a real solid person, mm -hmm. and they get their fame at 20 or 21, you might see what I call acquired entitled, like an acquired sense of entitlement. And by that I mean, 
when I've spent time with or work with, I've, I've worked in the industry for years. Mm. So people who are sort of famous and everything happens easily for them. They fly first class, they never wait in lines, cars pick them up, right. cars drop them off. They can tend to get very short and dismissive with people because they get so used to that. But the minute you point it out, them say, hey, slow down, sister. Like I am not, and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, and they'll, they'll catch themselves and they'll be really ashen. Mm. Whereas the person who's truly narcissistic would be like, uh, this is me, like I don't wait in lines. You know, they'll mm. really take that stance. Whereas a person who get, comes into fame and almost gets accustomed to things being easy, they might fall into it, but you can very easily pull them out. They're not narcissistic. It's almost like they're, they're victims of circumstance at that moment. And when they have to return back to normal civilization, they are able to do so. Hmm. Yeah, like I think about like the beautiful girl that's had yeah. guys kiss up to her, her whole life, it, and I think it's it's like a defense mechanism, right? A defense mechanism on her part. Yeah, like she's just so sick of it, and so it's like she doesn't know how any way else to act other than bratty and. Uh, yeah, I mean, and 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 it could <clears throat> also be though, that, and this is a real conundrum for very beautiful young women is that they get reinforced and validated for only their beauty for so long from a very young age because they've often started appearing as beautiful 11 12 years old and oh my god your daughter's so beautiful you're so beautiful and on and on they'll go mm. is that the, the child learns to be validated for their appearance that's also a way to turn them at least into you know maybe not even deep narcissist because deep narcissism starts in early childhood but at least you know at least deeply at the surface narcissist and mm. it may make them almost like they don't tune into the needs of others and they do become very focused on that validation it's really hard for those beautiful girls to age yeah. because that's the only card that they've got to play mm. you know, I mean, so unless they go to school and right but unfortunately that's often disincentivized for them you know mm. they're told like f you know focus on the beauty it's like a like buying a new car it loses value the minute you drive it off the lot like mm. with each minute they're, they're thinking, I'm going to cash in on the beauty. But by doing that, you may lose a lot of those key educational years. So they're often retreading. They're going back to school when they're in their late 20s, 30s, which is still great. I mean, who, I've, I've also worked with lots of students here in L.A. who were that young, beautiful girl. They modeled for a while. They acted for a while, but they didn't make it big. Mm -hmm. And now they're having to circle back and reconstruct a life. Hmm. And so at 35, they're going back to school and learning to be whatever it is they want to be. But it is hard because they do often feel like, ah, the world hasn't queued up for me. It's the same with beautiful men. This is not just beautiful women. I mean, this, this is not gender like specific. Me. Like you. See, you're going to get lost <laughs> with being the beautiful YouTube hottie. But it's, um, I, it is very, you have to be very careful to not play out that, that if, you have, if you're a parent and you have a really beautiful child, hmm. to really say, you're the loveliest thing in the world to me but let them know it's holistic. Like it's because of how they laugh and how they, you know, they oh, yeah, sing. Your kids? Your kids, yeah, yeah but, of course. But parents are the ones who are at the core of this, who really almost overpraise that child yeah. for their beauty. What do you suggest for our generation to prevent narcissism? Well, I think that unfortunately, it's one of those things where the seeds get sown early, you know, so it's like, it's, if you or if you have that kind of a base to fight against being, if, you, if that was your early childhood, it's one issue. How do you sort of fight against the societal narcissism? Maybe more of your question, or even in yourself, like those narcissistic mm. tendencies. I'd say, put the phone down, put the device down, listen to real 3D people. When people talk to you, listen to them. 3D? Um, 3D, like this, like this is, see how my hand's moving? It's not even, all, you know, it's, not, it's like actually not even VR. It's actually my hand. It's amazing. Like it's it's amazing. We, we keep trying to create <laughs> robots and printers that make this thing that already has yeah, worked. Yeah, hol holograms are coming. Yeah, holograms. Play. Right. So they talk to the real person. Make sure they are flesh and and bone. Um, put the device down. Listen to other people. Um, be mindful. Like think. You know. Think before you speak. Meditate. Uh, meditate. Post realize, it on Instagram. Yeah. Learn. You know. Be care. Don't become. <laughs> let social media be a sort of like how you largely interact with the world. <laughs> Le you know. Um, understand that you have the freedom to choose your life, strive to be authentic, mm -hmm. uh, understand the responsibilities that come with choice, which can be a headache, but they're great. It's a choice. It's a choice. All of these things are choices. Narcissism is a choice? Narcissism is not a choice. It's, a, it's In some ways, it's a <laughs> reflex. It's a reflex that reflex. you might have to fight against. You know, So your okay. tendency is to not empathize, to be superficial. Because remember, the narcissist has very, very poorly regulated self-esteem. Mm -hmm. They're empty inside. Oh, and shit. so they need the outside to They're feed dead them. Inside. They're dead inside. Not dead, empty. Hmm. Empty. I think around relationships, the more realistic you are, uh, the better the outcome. Is that you know relationships remain, and the research has shown this over and over again. 
more important than not smoking, more important than not drinking, more important than exercising or eating well is having healthy relationships in your life. It's literally the most important thing you could do for your health, mm. not only in the short term, but definitely in the long term. And this young generation of young people actually did in some cases see grandparents go on to older age, but in a healthy long-term relationship that where they made compromises yeah. and I do wonder what's going to happen in a generation where people don't have that going later into life it's, it's all a wait and see you know we may see more communal living living in older adults and which I think could also be healthy too mm. I mean we always have to be open to the fact that this could go down in many different ways are you worried about the future I am I mm. am actually I really am wow am. Mm -hmm. what do you how are you preparing uh, I'm probably gonna, I'm old, so I get to retire and leave. Okay. And I'll move away to a very soft, quiet, gentle place. And I'll write. I love to write. And I'll do clinical services with populations who don't usually get mental health services. And hmm. I work in India and I work in South Africa. So I love doing that work. And I think it's really important with the training I have to give back to the world in a way that, you know, help those regions of the world capacity build and make sure that the most vulnerable citizens are heard and are taken care of, especially women and women who have been abused or traumatized. Like that's how I would like to spend the rest of my story. It's becoming very Darwinian out there. And I think we should have evolved past that. Darwinian meaning selfish. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. It doesn't have to be that. We, we've. I think enough humanism has passed through the species that and we should be able to be above that. We should get more spiritual. I, I, yeah, I think evolve. Like, I don't think one person needs $13 billion. Yeah. Not when so many people are starving and don't have clean water. You can't make that argument to me. That's yeah. not humane. Yeah, that makes sense. So I would like, like to Like one see, yacht's good. One yacht's good, Three ten's yachts, too many. Come on. Yeah, right. You know, ten <laughs> homes, can't live in them all at the same time. One island. One island. Fine, whatever. And I'm not even sure that even a person needs one island. One, one so, little country. You know, right. Big. Really, 30 cars, you know. So I just have to say that I want to see more social conscience. And I think, I actually think that we're having sort of a epidemic of narcissism in the world at large, not in individuals, but like entire cultures. And we've become very consumerist and materialistic. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to end up doing us in. You That's seen Fight Club? Huh? You know, it's so funny you say that. My students just yesterday in the lab meeting, Dr. DeVosso, we want to watch Fight Club with you. And I do film commentary, so I'll mm. watch films and we oh, sort of cool. deconstruct film. So I said Fight Club will be the first one we do. So okay. maybe we'll invite you, Andrew, to you, come you to our film commentary. Yet? I haven't seen oh. sections, but everyone says to me, for a narcissism researcher, well, you have to see it. My channel, it barely has anything to do with it, but the name... Um, L-A-H-W-F mm -hmm. uh, stands for Losing All Hope Was Freedom, oh. which is a quote from Fight Club. Oh, from Fight Club, right, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. So, yeah. so and that, when I wrote my book, a friend of mine, Rob Mack, who's a really amazing writer and, and works actually here in L.A. in television and stuff, he had told me, you got to watch Fight Club. And when I told him the premise of my book, and he said exactly that quote to me. Because my book is, in some ways, is about losing all hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is. Especially Ultimately, in relationships. Yes. Yeah. In my book, the biggest takeaway, the biggest takeaway, and it's for all human relationships, not just with narcissists, is manage your expectations. Yeah. All of us have limitations. Narcissists have lots of limitations. But if you can manage your expectations, then you can keep a relationship, you know, you can make it work. But you may not want to make it work. But yeah. don't expect a narcissist to come bursting through the door caring about your day with bunches of flowers and saying, hey, honey, I want to hear about all of the, your successes and vulnerabilities. They don't care. Right. Find someone else who does and maybe stay in the relationship but have friends who do care. Well, this has been wonderful. Is there any last words you want to say? Um, I would say that love is, love is good for us. Like I think that you know, I, with this kind of a conversation, it's easy to believe that love is, um, you know, love is this sort of dark, you know, sort of Romantic, thistle, you yeah. know, prickly, icky, icky space. Love is, love is good, it's a healing force, it's healthy for us. However, we often give it away to the wrong people. I think we spend 90% of our energy on the most toxic people in our life yeah. and then we give the, um, and we give the be we give our best energy to the worst people and we give our no energy to the, um, to the best people in our lives, if I made that yeah. clear. Yeah, so we, don't, we, we almost need to flip the paradigm. Give the best of yourself to the best people in your life. Mm -hmm. And then for the people who don't aren't really present in your life, you know, don't stop stop handing yourself over on a silver platter. There's Learn to value yourself. There's a part of me that kind of wants to be a sociopath. 
Yeah. Have I, you have you dealt with people that look like like that? I had a student once come up to me and said, <laughs> "Could you teach me to be more sociopathic and narcissistic? Because it'll do me so much good in my business. Hmm. I'll succeed so much more." Hmm. And I was like, "Oh my God, this is no! <laughs> I will not be your narcissism coach." Hmm. You know, so it's easy to do. Like, not ever care about what. You know, only don't care about other people, don't be empathic, be grandiose. But like, I couldn't do that. I, I have to say more than a few how, opportunities How do you know life. you're not one how, and why should I believe you? Because I'm, I, I, you can see, I'm probably too empathic at times. Um, I'm not entitled. You know, mm. I'm the person who I know, but say, you can't you know, just say that. I, I live it. Mm. If you spent a day with me, you'd say, I'd say, you know, if you track someone for a 24 hour period, you'd have a real good handle on it. Right. You know, it's like pornography. I know it when I see it. I mm. know a narcissist when I see them. And now you know all the sub, sub parts of it. So when people ask me all the time, they're like, am I a narcissist? I'm like, no, nah, you're good. <laughs> okay. You don't think I am? You're, you're like, you're one of those cusp people. I'd need to do like a 24 Ooh. hour follow. <laughs> I think you're just too, you're, you're too self-reflective <clears throat> and too concerned about it. <clears throat> but I think the swimming pool you're swimming in right now and succeeding in, <clears throat> it pulls for it. So for you, it's, it's almost be, required. It's almost required, but you can fake it. Like you can play it a role, <clears throat> but then you have to say, I need to make sure this doesn't bleed over into the authentic Andrew like yeah. I can still be a loving attentive good person but I can play the game I need to play to succeed on this platform that may require me to be more superficial or be more mm -hmm. validation seeking you just got to you got to be on top of it once you have some awareness you're in a better position to control it but you're like no nah, I'm not like that at all that lack of insight and narcissists have no insight you're showing a little bit too much insight for mm -hmm. me to really throw you under the bridge Throw you, yeah, throw you oh. off. Yeah, no. Oh, to conclude. To really dismiss you off. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Um, cool. Would you, oh yeah, would you, uh, I guess, I mean, I'll probably edit this out, but mm -hmm. would, do you, would you be able to get in touch with a narcissist that would want to come on the show? That would be hard. That Because it, I could never refer anyone clinically. Does that make sense? Because of confidentiality yeah. and all of that. I mean, I could, it, the problem is I could say. And, and know, I can blur their face. and Right, right. <laughs> Right. And their voice, yeah. Right, but I could never suggest it to a client. Like I just that that by okay. law I'm not allowed to do. But I could definitely sniff around the circles I'm in. Like my students will likely know people are narcissistic and see if they're willing to talk more. About well, it. well, what's hard is like they 99 percent won't, won't, won't admit want it. To do it. Yeah, you, they won't you admit could probably that they do are. a reach out though. You could do a reach out through, through social media. Are you yeah. a narcissistic person? Someone will come through largely because they'd want to be on because they'd want to. Um, yeah. You know, they'd like the validation. Yeah. So it's almost like they're an easy group to get for something well, like this. Yeah, to find a true like diehard one, I feel like I'd, I'd just have to wait until I run into one. Right, but then what would and you ask I, them? Like you'd make them come clean on camera. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> well, no, I would just I would straight up. I'd be like, hey, can I interview you? I'd be interviewing with a narcissist, and and yeah, like, they might tough. say yes because right. they like the attention. Right, because it's it's no longer <laughs> as bad a word as it once was. You right. know, it, it, it used well, to be. Like, well, now it's damning. like tied to like charming and. You're like right. the charming villain and but it's kind of like sexy or whatever. I'll always say to know? people, charm and charisma may be two of the most dangerous traits out there. When I have a friend, she says to me, I met a guy so charming and charismatic, I'm like, break up now. Here's my phone, break up with him now. Mm -hmm. I'll put his number on my phone, break up with him. What if he's like the whole package, so? The, you don't need to lead with the charm and charisma. I say it's sort of lead with some of your neurosis. Like, like, be, like, like be shy and awkward on the first date? Yeah. Mm -hmm. shy, and, shy and awkward is who's going to stay with you when you're 85 years old. Mark my mm -hmm. words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that glib, glib charm and glib charisma tend to be, you know, their their salesman traits. Glib. Glib. What's that word mean? Glib is is it's almost like a, it's an arrogance. It's a um, okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's an arrogance. Audacious, but arrogant more than anything. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so nice of you to come. Thank you. It's a Let's pleasure. Yeah, what an interesting I'll, conversation. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, link your it. I'll link your uh, website and great. your book in the description. Sounds great. Thank you. And, and um, I'm writing a third book right now oh, on good. entitlement and narcissism. So yeah. <laughs> When's that come out? That comes out in the fall, around nice. November. Yeah. Fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks for watching. I will. Thank you. I will see you guys next week. <laughs>